Following on from the previous video, which introduced the low voltage load flow calculation, we'll now see what further options are available for this analysis. The LV load flow prognosis study case is activated and we can see that a variation is active which adds additional potential future charging points to the network. They're placed at every node at which a low voltage load is connected and where there's no existing charging point. The additional charging points, each for just one customer, are given a smaller symbol to make it easy to distinguish them. They're configured with a coincidence curve definition, which has the same configuration as the one used by the existing charging points, but is a separate object. The reason for this will become clear a little later. For this demonstration, we'll scale the household loads to zero so that we can more clearly see the effect of adding the additional charging points. In addition, we'll set this value to 100%. We'll come back to this parameter later to understand its purpose. Having executed the command, let's look at the results. What we see is that the coincidence consideration is applied to the existing connection points, so 22 kilowatts for two units plus a further third unit of 11 kilowatts already results in a reduction due to coincidence from 33 to 30 kilowatts. At this connection point, we might expect that this 30 kilowatts would simply be added to the 22 kilowatts from the potential charging points, as the existing and potential charging points have distinct coincidence curves, but this is not the case. Instead, we see a sum of 40 kilowatts. To understand this, we need to return to the command dialog. If we have two different load categories, that is, using two different coincidence curves, we can still consider them in conjunction with each other. This is done by assigning a coupling object. Here, all the coincidence curves are listed and the matrix below allows mutual consideration of units of a certain category to be defined. How should this be read? Let's look first at the diagonal cells of the matrix. The entry here shows us that when looking at existing charging points, each additional existing charging point will increase the counted number of units for the coincidence curve by one. The same applies for households, which are not being considered at the moment for the calculation and for the potential charging points. Since both existing and potential charging points are in reality the same type of load, we'd like to consider them together. By configuring these values in these off-diagonal cells of the matrix, we ensure that each further potential charging point will also be considered in the counting of the existing ones, as well as each existing charging point being considered when counting the potential ones. The zeros in these cells of the matrix ensure that the households would be considered independently from both the existing and potential charging points. So, we're able to use different coincidence curves for existing and potential charging points, but still consider them together when counting the units. We can see the results now with all the potential units installed. The loading on this line is already fairly high. And with the household loads included as well, network limits would definitely be exceeded. So it would be useful to gauge what level of penetration might be possible. Let's look again at the scaling factors. The two sets of numbers are used differently. These scaling factors are applied directly to the maximum power of the load, but the active unit's percentages in this column are taken into account when counting the units 
and this is used to model different penetration levels. Let's set this value to 50% and see how this works. At this connection point, one unit is connected. Since this cannot be scaled down by 50%, the full 11 kilowatts is considered. When looking at the cable section here, the number of supplied units with the assignment of the potential charging point coincidence curve is 2, and therefore the 50% factor leads to a consideration of only one of the two charging points. This means that there's a contribution of only 11 kilowatts to the loading on this cable. We recall that the scaling factor and active unit percentages are stored in operation scenarios if used. This means that this option allows different penetration levels to be easily assessed and used as the basis for network expansion plans for future years.